Welcome back everyone, this is Nolan from New Retro Gaming here. Uh, I wanted to do a little video today of uh, my recent find and what really sparked my uh, re-entry back into Magic cards. So I started collecting uh, cards in 96 I believe, 1996. I was either 6 or 7 years old when I bought my first Magic card. and Back in those days, uh, there weren't a lot of cards around so you could find them pretty cheap and I remember uh, going to the local game stores, comic shops in my hometown, and you could find most bulk commons for five cents, a lot of uncommons for five cents. Um, I remember buying cards like Aladdin's Ring and um, Aladdin's Lamp and some of those uh, Arabian Nights cards for under a dollar. And just seeing the prices these days has been just crazy to think uh, the appreciation on those old cards. So. Um, I stopped collecting, oh, probably 2002, and then for a brief period from about 2006 to 2008, I was collecting again. But I haven't bought any cards up until a couple weeks ago. Um, so I found my old collection. Just kind of wanted to show you the highlights of them. There's quite a few cards. Um, I found about 5,000 bulk cards that um, I'm not going to go through individually, but found a buyer for about half of this stuff and the other half I'm going to hold on to just because of uh, the nostalgia and you know, it's just too hard to find these cards these days so uh, I'm going to add them to my collection so I'm going to start with uh, I'll start with what I'm going to keep so again you know back in the day I remember um, quite a few Arabian Nights cards that I paid under a dollar for one in particular that I remember is this Repentant Blacksmith from Arabian Nights. I remember paying 25 cents for this card. Um, and a couple weeks ago when I was going through and seeing what I had just tucked away in my house, I realized that this is a $22 card. And I kept these things in a sleeve and they look beautiful for being, you know, the 1995. So these are 25 year old cards and they look just amazing. And I have not one, not two, not three, but four of them just hang out. So even if I spent a, a dollar on them, I think I spent a quarter, but let's just say a dollar. I spent $4 when I was younger for something that's now worth 88. So even with inflation, that's still a pretty good return for something that uh, was just kind of tucked away in my house. So really good find there. Um, another Arabian nice card was this Abu Jafar, and I do remember paying a dollar for this one. Uh, actually, I was at Claremont Comics in Eau Claire, Wisconsin in probably 1996, 1997, something like that. Um, yeah, got a, a new card there. Um, another set that I was collecting uh, from 2006 to 2008 was just buying a ton of booster boxes of Saviors of Kamigawa. At the time, it was kind of considered a junk set. I remember paying for fifty dollars most for a booster box and I bought several of those um, and at the time I, I sold off what I thought was you know valuable I think I pretty much broke even on those and the rest I had tucked away in um, repacks that I did I showed you in a previous video um, kind of what the repack looked like um, where I bundled 15 cards and just to give people a chance to to you know, pay a dollar or whatever it was to get some some cool cards. Um, I found about 60 of those a couple weeks ago and I went through them each individually and just realized the hundreds and hundreds of dollars of cards that were in those that uh, have since come around and just wanted to show you a few of those. So this is a, a Foil Sakura Tribe Scout. It's a common um, I'll show you how many of the common version I have of that card. That's a $2.25 card. But the foil here is worth about $40. So you're talking almost 20 times the value of the regular version. The foil's worth almost 20 times that much. I just had this sitting out in my collection. And what I love about these, <coughs> excuse me, these Saviors of Kamigawa cards that I have is just how good a condition that they held up in. Um, again, I, I did put them in sealed packs, so it kind of kept some of the air, some of the dust out of there, and they were also in boxes, so that probably helped a little bit too. So we're talking, I mean, that's a $40 card. I looked up at the price history of this card, 
And at the time, it was um, in 2006, 2007, this was going for like a dollar two at the max. Um, this is the most expensive regular card in the set now. It's going for about 33 a piece, and I had two of them. So pretty cool there. This Machiko Kanda Truth Seeker card. Again, all the ones I'm going to show you were mostly cards that were maybe a couple dollars back in the mid 2000s. Um, this is a $17 card now, and I have two that I'm keeping, and one that is um, being sold to a friend that collects cards. This Orboro Palace in the Clouds. Um, this one was has always been a little bit more expensive, but I did not realize that I was sitting on four of them. I have three here. Again, I'm selling one um, to that friend. Same with Mir in the Moaning Well. This is, uh, I think uh, it was around $10. Um, had two of those. And a couple more foil rares here. So this Ar Arayo Sorotami Ascendant and this Choice of Damnations. I believe both these foils are going for well over $10. So I'm just going to hold on to those for now and just see kind of where that takes us. Um, and then again, kind of going back to the the collecting in the 90s and how cheap you could find cards. I remember finding all these Legends cards and, you know, these aren't worth too much right now, even being 25 years old. Some of these are worth, you know, 50 cents or a dollar. But these were all cards that um, you could find in the boxes at the at the hobby shop going through for um i know a single card would be like five cents or a lot of stores would do 25 or 30 for a dollar so i can imagine that i probably did the the bulk purchases because i just loved the artwork on the cards in the 90s um the the newer sets are are looking a lot better especially that throne of eldraine that i've just been drooling over lately um but it just doesn't compete with what the cards were back in the day before they kind of switched to that um, that newer look and style to them. So, yeah, I have some uh, cards from the dark in there. That was a pretty cool set, too. So most of those I'm hanging on to. What I am getting rid of, um, hope, and I'm hoping my friend that I'm selling these to can get a pretty decent return on these, um, again, so here's here's one that I never thought in a million years would be as expensive as it is. Uh, Prophecy, I was trying to collect a full set of that for years and years and ended up uh, finally giving in. And this common card right here, this Rhystic Study, if I could go back and buy every single copy of that I could for five, ten cents, I would because this card alone is $22 for a common from Prophecy, which... Um, not a lot of love for that set. I thought the art style for that set was really cool, so I was collecting for it. But just amazing that that goes for as much as it does. And then here's a rare from Prophecy Overburden. This was like a $12, $13 card. Um, another Arabian Nights is Dan Dandian. Um, here's that other Machiko. Here's a non-foil Araro. Araro. Uh, Celestial Kieran. So all these cards that are in the sleeves that you're seeing, most of them are anywhere from three to ten dollars a piece. And just to show you that these were just hanging out in packs that I was basically just looking to get rid of for as cheap as I could, just to give to another uh, collector. These Sisse's rings, I remember buying these for again probably a couple pennies. These are a buck a piece now, and I had quite a few. I think I'm holding on to 20 of them. Who Ice Age. Ice Age was one of the first main um, kind of sets that I was collecting for back in the day. I just thought they were really cool cards. So yeah, lots of saviors of Kamigawa cards in here, just to show you kind of what, what you'll find. Uh, Dark Steel is another one that I collected for heavily. These Shrieking Drakes, these are going for two, three dollars a piece now, and I had quite a few of those. More Dark Steel. So yeah, I just wish I could go back in time and kind of give a little bit more love to those sets. I know as a kid, you don't, you don't know what's gonna be popular, and even as an adult, I don't know what sets or what cards are gonna go up in value, but just goes to show you that um, if you tucked away a collection somewhere in your house when you were younger, maybe go back through and just take a peek and see what you have because um, 
My collection that I considered kind of junk at this point uh, turns out was worth well over a thousand dollars. So that's pretty cool, especially when as I'm getting back into collecting. Um, that's going to buy me quite a few uh, booster boxes of the newer sets to see what I can pull from that. Maybe pull the same magic in 15, 20 years when my daughter's getting ready for college. So yeah, I think the rest of this is all Savers of Kamigawa, but all these sleeved cards are, uh, most of them are, again, 5 to $20, somewhere in that range. These foils, I can't believe how much more the foils are than the regular version you know nowadays with these newer sets and it could be because they're so new but some some of the foils aren't even uh more expensive than the uh regular ones because of these collector's boosters that they came out with um you just get so many foils and back before it used to be a lot tougher to find um and i think to close it out we just have some of these there's uncommons that are all worth a dollar to two dollars that just sitting on so many and then coming up here is going to be this here we go so here i was talking about the foil card that i have that's worth 40. these are each worth over two dollars a piece and i think i have 25 of them here um just from hoard i guess hoarding them over the years uh, a lot of people sell off their bulk for you know five dollars for a thousand cards or whatever the the bulk rates are these days but you just never know which commons are going to end up being the dollar, two dollar, three dollar, even twenty dollars like that one I showed you before, that rustic study. So pretty cool. It um, was definitely a trip down memory lane to go through my old cards. And what a good send off to get these to a good collector and hopefully he can flip them and, and make a little bit off of them. And then at the same time, I'll be able to um, buy a few more boxes to open up on the channel here. I got some... I did order a couple of those collector's booster boxes, but uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to open those right away or not, just because they were kind of expensive. Um, and then la last highlight, it's not magic related, but I found old Yu-Gi-Oh cards in that same uh, folder. And most of them are just worth, you know, buck for these sleeved ones, buck a piece, which is still pretty good. But these two cards in particular looked them up on TCG Player. These are each $50 cards. So I had bought into Yu-Gi-Oh! a little bit, but mainly got them as Christmas presents because my cousin collected Yu-Gi-Oh! cards. And I remember getting, I think I got this one in a tin, and then this one I was lucky enough to pull it out of a booster pack. Uh, one of the very few Yu-Gi-Oh! booster packs that I ever bought. Um, and just to see like how crazy expensive these are because these were the first sets of the of the whole game and that's another game that still continues but um, due to time and trying not to spend too much on my hobbies I am not going to collect any Yu-Gi-Oh going forward so I hope you guys enjoyed that video uh, for me it was more just to kind of log what I what I used to own at some point um, learning more and more what the what the value with recording and filming different things can be. Um, so this has been a, a lot of fun. Um, I hope you again all learned and took something away from this as well. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, like and comment on the video below, and we'll see you for our next video. Thanks!